Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this episode we're going to be talking about the new Green Homes Grant Scheme which was introduced by the UK government in September this year. And this sees homeowners in England able to claim vouchers up to £5,000 and even in some cases £10,000 on works to make their homes more energy efficient. Now for someone who is on the verge of getting the keys to their very first property, I'm quite excited about this and I'm sure I'm not the only one. But we do need to act fast as these vouchers only last until the 31st of March 2021, so only a few months away. So let's go over what it covers and how we can apply. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. So let's go over what it is. The Green Homes Grant Scheme was announced in the summer budget in July as part of a £3 billion investment package to support 140,000 green jobs, upgrade buildings, and all in all, make the world a better place by reducing emissions. So how are they gonna do this? The government will actually be issuing vouchers to help fund certain energy efficient works to your property. Now these vouchers only cover two thirds of the cost of the work being done with a maximum amount of £5,000 per household. For example, if I had some insulation work being done on my property and this work cost £3,000, under this scheme I can cover £2,000 of it as a voucher from the government, £2,000 being two-thirds of the full cost of the job. Please note that for most of us, this scheme will only be covering two-thirds of the cost. This means that the remaining one-third will have to come out of our own pocket. So in this example, if £2,000 is being covered by the voucher, I will have to pay the remaining £1,000 from my own pocket. However, one small difference, if you or someone in your household are claiming certain benefits, you may be eligible to claim vouchers that will cover 100% of the cost, with the maximum voucher amount being £10,000 rather than £5,000. Now let's understand what kind of works are covered by this scheme. Now, the types of works are actually categorised into two sections. You've got your primaries and your secondary types of work. So the primary works cover insulation measures to your property, so this is insulations to your floor, your walls, your loft, etc, etc. Or low carbon heating measures, for example, a biomass boiler or a hybrid heat pump. Now, one thing that we really do need to note is that for any of the primary jobs, as well as the secondary jobs, which I'm about to mention, the work can only be a new or a top up installation. The vouchers do not cover any replacement jobs. So if I already have insulation in my walls, I cannot take them out and put new ones in under this voucher scheme. I can add more but I cannot replace them. So it's key to understand that this is only for new installments or top-up installments, not a replacement. Moving on to the secondary jobs, now these are a bit more varied and these cover things like draft proofing, upgrading your windows to double or triple glazing, getting external energy efficient doors, etc, etc. However, there is one small catch. To use the voucher, you have to use it on at least one of the primary jobs. So that is home insulation or low carbon heating. Now, once you've secured the voucher for your primary job, you'll get the same equivalent voucher for your secondary job. Sounds a bit confusing, so let's use an example. Say for my primary job, I'm gonna go with loft insulation and I managed to secure a voucher of 500 pounds. I will then be allowed to get another voucher at a maximum of £500 to cover any secondary jobs. For example, upgrading my windows from a double to a triple glazing. Now, as you can see, the voucher that you get for your secondary job is really driven by what voucher you get for your primary job as the value for them will always have to be the same. Please note, however, that you don't actually have to go for the secondary job. If you just want to go for the primary one, that's absolutely fine. But the secondary jobs are there if you choose to have it. Now, you may be eligible for the Green Homes Grant if you are living in England and you are either a homeowner, a landlord, or you own a park home on a residential site. The grant isn't available to new builds, so if you don't have a previous occupier to your property, you won't be able to get the grant. And there are some restrictions to claiming the Green Homes Grant if you are claiming other grants or funding to do similar jobs. I'll put a list here of the other grants and funding schemes which may impact your eligibility for this Green Homes Grant. So how do we apply? So the first step that we want to take is to find out if we are potentially eligible for this scheme. 
Now to find this out, we can go over to the Simple Energy Advice website, which is a website set up by the government, and they have a very short questionnaire which tells you whether or not you are likely to be eligible for this scheme or not. Now I'll be putting a link to that questionnaire in my description box and there's going to be a few more links that I'll be mentioning in the next step or two and all of those links will be found in my description box as well. Now step two is that you now have to find tradespeople to carry out the work for you. Now these tradespeople do have to be registered under the Trustmark and or Micro Generation Certification Scheme. I had to read that out because that was a bit of a mouthful. The website that I mentioned earlier also has a link to help you find tradesmen within your local area. The government actually advise that you get at least three quotes from different trades companies to make sure you're getting the best deal. I would also suggest that you find a couple of quotes outside of the scheme just in case some tradespeople take this opportunity to overinflate their prices under this scheme. Now once you've got someone booked in we move on to the third and final step and this is to get the voucher by going onto the government website and filling out an online application and I'll just display all the information that you will need to fill out this application form. So obviously there are some benefits into getting these works done to your property. The first one being is that it is likely to save you some money on your energy bills. Now how much money exactly is quite a difficult one to answer. It obviously all depends on the condition of your property today. However, as an average, the Treasury have actually claimed that for a family, this is likely to save them up to £600 in energy bills. However, if you want to get a more personalised idea of how much you could be saving, if you go over to the Simple Energy Advice website, they have a really decent questionnaire where they pull up information they already know about your property and they'll get you to fill in more information as well, such as what type of boiler you have, if you have single, double or even triple glazing in your property, etc, etc. And based on this information, it will suggest to you what type of works that you can get done on your property and for each of these jobs it will tell you how much it is likely to cost for the installation versus how much you are likely to save in your energy bills if you had that work done and then from this you can then get a good gauge of how long it will take for you to break even. Another benefit is that having some of these improvements done can improve the value of your property. Money.co.uk did some research and they found out that if you did the following works to your property, you can potentially increase the value of the property by X amount. Now, unfortunately, the scheme doesn't come without its drawbacks, with the major drawback being that applicants are actually finding it difficult to actually book tradespeople in with many stating that they are unable to get quotes from installers and once they do get a quote they are likely to already be fully booked by March 2021 which is of course the cutoff date for when these vouchers do expire which is why there has been an increase in demand from businesses and homeowners to get the government to push back this 31st of March deadline claiming that six months simply isn't enough time for everyone to find a credible tradesperson and to book them in and I would have to agree. I know I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I was quite excited to use this scheme however I'm unlikely to get the keys to my property until the end of the month and I have a feeling by the time it gets to December it's already going to be a little bit too late to book anyone in if it's not already too late already which is a shame because I do think this is an excellent scheme especially to try and help boost the economy during these Covid times but I do think it has been executed quite poorly but hopefully the government will review and extend the deadline and that could mean that we can see the full effect of this scheme being put into use but I guess time will only tell on that. Cool, so that's it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've got any success or woeful stories about this scheme. And as always, if you thought today's episode was helpful, please do smash that like button. And I release a video every single Monday. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later.